Okay, on this video, we're going to set up a laser projector show using Laser Show Gen. This is a nice piece of software that works very well with the laser dock and allows you to create some pretty cool uh, laser projector shows. So let's go ahead and uh, start. You've got a lot of shapes here that you can choose from. I'm just going to put a circle here. And you can see right now the circle's white. I can adjust color. To select an object, you hold down the control key and click on the object. You then right click and you can do things like reapply properties. So now it's a red uh, circle. So if you click laser on, you'll get a message that says you've not selected a DAC. Please go to settings and set up a connection. So bounce over here. Under laser connection, you can click and it'll take a second, but it finds the laser dock. So if you have the drivers installed for the laser dock, you can go ahead and just uh, select laser dock there. Go back to the editor mode and turn laser on. Now you can see we've got a nice representation of what we have here up on the screen. So that's uh, just how to get the laser dock communicating with the laser. So let's go ahead and create a laser projector show. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and go into the timeline mode. Now in the timeline mode, I can sync everything with an audio file to create my show. So I'm gonna go ahead and load some audio. This is just some royalty-free audio that I found online. And you can see it's loading it in here and it's showing the points of, uh, this is the emphasis, the beat, uh, different points in the music. So you can see that represented visually. That's really nice. So if you listen to this uh, piece, it has a countdown. Now, if you look under the shapes in the editor, you've got circles and line, free draw. But one of the interesting things here, you could load a font, but they've got a lot of symbols just loaded in. So I'm just going to scroll down here and start with this. So we've got five and that is the one we want to start with. Now I'm going to choose the color I want this to be. So we're going to start with a green five. Click right here and turn on laser to look at it. Looks good. It may be off center just a little bit, but pretty good. Now at this point, this animation is set uh, with a toggle box here and it's not enabled. And if I was to enable it, any movement I did here would be recorded and would put down about a second's worth of animation, about 30 frames. Now, what I want to do is rotate this five up into position. So let's go ahead and click on the five. And you've got an anchor point here. That's the point that it rotates around. We're going to start with it over here on its side. And now I'm going to enable. This is basically auto keyframing, although it's not exactly a keyframe, but it's just an, a fast automatic animation system. So now I'm going to rotate this up. And over the default 30 frames, that's going to rotate up into position. Now, if you want to park in position and hold for a little bit, you can come under here and increase this length. I'm going to increase it to 40. So if you look, the five rotates up and parks for a second, which is great. So let's turn on the laser and look at that. Okay, that looks great. So let's go ahead and send that to the timeline. You click right here and that sends it to the timeline. And now if we turn on laser and watch the show, We've got five, we need a four. So let's click right here, just past the five. And we'll go back to the editor mode. So we're going to drop a four on here. And let's go ahead and set the color first. We'll do a red four. Okay, so on this four, I think what I'll do is scale it down and turn this on and just scale it up to size. So let's take a look at that. Yep, so we got the four scaling up. Let's go ahead and go to length, increase that to 40. And we will send it to the timeline. So let's line these up. Now you can see over here that the break between the four and the five is after the beginning of the voice saying four. So let's move that over. Now let's take a look at this with the laser on and see how it looks. Perfect. So with this software tool, you can very easily uh, sync your laser animations with the points in the audio. So it's actually a lot of fun, quite easy to do. So let's go ahead and go back to the editor mode and create our three. So we will clear this. OK, so I've been, I have animation enabled and I have shake enabled. And we're going to create a three. I want this to be a yellow three. And let's just go ahead and scale it down. And you can see it shakes as it scales down. 
We'll add a little length to that and go and send that to the timeline. Now we got a three. Now the three needs to, whoops. Uh, let's go back to the editor and send that back to the timeline. So I accidentally put it over the five, but five, four, three. So I need to move the four over. It was a little long and position the three right here. All right, turn on laser and take a look. Five, four, three, two. So I really like that shaking effect for this because we're counting down to kind of an explosion. So that's great. Let's go ahead and jump back into the editor mode. All right, so the position that you put this at is where your next uh, clip that you're creating will come in at. So let's go back to editor. We're going to clear this and create two. And let's do a purple two. That's good. And let's turn this stuff off. And we'll rotate this two in from this direction. So we'll rotate it in counterclockwise. So enable, rotate, let's take a look. So shake was still on, I just disenabled it. That's fine, we'll leave that on. I'll probably look cool actually. So let's go ahead and add to the length. Send it to the timeline. We need to move the three back just a little, put two into position, and I'm going to go ahead and add one and zero while I'm at it before I watch it just to save some time. So let's clear this one out. Let's create the one. And we'll go with, uh, let's think about this. We'll go with a yellow one. And we're already enabled for the animations, so let's just uh, do something here with it. How about just scaling it down? That looks good. Add a little to the length. And send timeline. That's great. And now we'll create zero. So clear. On zero, I think uh, we will just put it in the center and scale it up a little larger to start with. Let's go ahead and make this one blue. So we'll reapply properties to make it blue. And initially, we're going to have it scaled up a little bit. So let's make it about like this. Turn this on, and we'll scale this down. Let's take a look at that. And we will just add a little bit to the length. Let's drop that into there, send to timeline. Let's move the one over a little bit. All right, let's watch the countdown and see how it looks. So turn laser on. Five, four, three, two, one, zero, ignition. Awesome. So we've been creating our own content here. Now at this point, I want to go ahead and load in some ILDA files that I've already downloaded from the internet. These are just some free files that contain animations that I found online, and you can Google ILDA files for laser projectors and find all kinds of them out there. And uh, these were some free ones that I came across. So what we want to do is import an ILDA file to the timeline. And we'll go ahead and load this atomic one and put it right after the countdown. So let's turn on laser and look at that. Right where it says lift off, I want to put an explosion. So we will load another one of these. Let's check out the, the bang. Here we go. So we got the bang right there. So let me just move these a little bit and we'll take a look. Laser on. All right, so we're just going to bring in a few more of these. Right after liftoff, I'm going to, whoops, click the wrong thing there. So right after liftoff, we're going to import 
this one. This is called takeoff, and this is a jet plane taking off. So that will look pretty cool. Let's take a look at this. Great. Now, we'll just load another one here. One of the fun ones that I found. Keep clicking the wrong place. All right, so we'll just import another one here. And this one is Lindsay ST. I guess this stands for Lindsay Sterling, although I did not see the violin. But we'll just set it here after the plane. Turn on laser and take a look at this. And we're probably going to need to modify this because as you can see, it's way, way too big for our use. So this is kind of one of the nice things you can do here. We can click on this and basically open it in the frame editor. And that's going to give us the ability to scale this down. Make sure you don't have the animation enabled uh, toggle on. And we're going to click on this and scale it down to a better size. And we're also going to change the color. So let's color it something like this, kind of an orange. All right, so in order to do that, we'll reapply the properties. And we're going to send this back to the timeline. And it's going to ask if we want to replace the selected timeline, timeline object with these frames. And we do. So now let's take a look. Turn on the laser. And we've scaled that down. And it now fits within our projection window. So we do a lot of neat editing, even to existing ILDA files. Now you can get into this and adjust the timing so that her dancing will match with the beat of the music. So if you notice right here, we have a downbeat. And let's just listen to this for a second. So it would be kind of nice if this if this point right here was where she brings her leg down to the ground. So I can scroll through this just by sliding this ILDA file. And I can find the point right here where her foot slams down to the ground like that. Let's back up a little bit and watch this. Perfect. So that's really nice. OK, so now we have this empty area here. And we need to create something to go inside this space. All right, so let's create a simple animation here. Let's just create a line. And this will be a green line to represent the ground. And let's create a red ball. And before we create the ball, what we want to do is set the length of this to 30 frames. And by turning on this enabled uh, on, under animation, you can see that that green line is across all 30 frames now. So that's great. Now we're going to turn that off, and we're going to switch to current frame only for the rest of this. Let's put a red ball right here like that. Turn on the laser and take a look. All right, looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and select this ball, select the ball, and we're going to copy it. So right click, copy. Now let's go ahead and advance one frame. And because onion skin's on, you can see the, the ghost of where the ball used to be. We're going to paste. And we're going to move this up a little bit. That's a little more movement than I want. And now we've got the, the, and now we've got the beginning of our animation. So go forward another frame. And that looks good. Go for another frame, paste, and reposition. And you want to look at the onion skin effect to see where this ball's headed. So go forward again. And we're just going to uh, repeat this process to bring the ball down and bounce it off the green line. So bear with me while we do that. We'll have it hit, and at this point, I think I'm going to squish it a little bit so that it kind of squishes down. And I'm going to move it a little bit long now. Position this one over here. And on the next frame, we'll go back to the normal size. All right, so we've got this basically done, and we're 
coming up on frame 15. So we'll go ahead and just make this a 15 frame animation. There we go. So we're going to adjust the length now to 15 frames and turn on the laser and watch this. Perfect. All right, so I like that. We're gonna send that to the timeline. We'll put it right here. And for now, we'll just fill this space with it. So I know it's a little silly, but let's take a look at it. So we're going to go ahead and start at the beginning and check this out. Five, four, three, two, Alright, so that goes over the basics of it, and the ball bouncing section was way too long and rather silly, but it gives you a good idea, a good overview of the software. It shows you what you can create and do very quickly. It's fast, it's a lot of fun, it works great with LaserDoc. So yeah, that's Laser Show Gen. Check it out.